What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Short Time Podcast. I am your host, Brett Dev, and this is the podcast where I sit down with interesting digital nomads, entrepreneurs, and expats that are living here in Thailand. And today in this episode, I'm joined by another Brett. Brett Battles. Brett Battles. Yeah. And um, Brett Battles is a, which is his real name. His real name. 100%, real name, not, by the way. not a pen name. Yeah. He's an author from LA. Right. And um, you met up with me in uh, Chiang Mai about a week ago, right? A week ago, exactly. Well, we, we started communicating. I, I think I reached out to you about three months ago, actually. Is that just, long ago? Yeah, almost three months ago when I was planning the trip over just to um, see if we could sit down and talk because I had some questions about, uh, uh, about the, you know, people here living here and, and what it's like and everything like that. So, yeah, because yeah. you, you are a, um, an author and you write fiction. Right. I write thrillers. Um, uh, some just gen- uh, basic thrillers and uh, uh, everyday thrillers, spy thrillers. I also do a little sci-fi. Um, but uh, part of the reason for me coming here is that uh, I um, have an idea for a thriller that takes place largely in Chiang Mai and involves some of the communities that you're familiar with. And that was why I reached out to you after watching some of your videos and everything. And it go, ah. There, there's a good resource right there. All right, so, so it's a um, thriller, um, digital nomad you mentioned. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yes, yeah, a yeah. little bit of that. Um, you know, uh, expats. Who knows? It's a, it's an interesting community uh, here. It's, I mean, you have the locals, you have the expats who've been here forever. You have the this burgeoning uh, digital uh, nomad community. You have the backpackers, travel loggers, and just your basic tourists. All everybody thrown into this place. So it, it, it's an interesting mix and, and can create for some interesting situations. So it's going to create a good scene for, for a book, perhaps. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. I'm fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is not your, uh, your first time in Thailand, right? It is not. I've been, yeah. I've been to Thailand several times. It's, it's uh, um, a great place for me. I get very creatively released when I come here, which is interesting. And I, I think it's... a. This is something I was thinking about when on my way over here was that I, I think everybody, um, I mean, definitely people who are in the creative world, but also in other things, you need something that bre- might break you from your normal train of thought and everything. And working in Los Angeles, and I'm writing in Los Angeles all the time, it's the same thing day in, day out. I do the same, I have my same routine. I, you know, writing and then writing in the morning, writing again in the afternoon, same places, same whatever. But um, I I, I sometimes need to come to the point where I want to really just have time to just think about ideas and not actually writing new material, thinking about ideas that um, are completely new um, to me beyond the uh, uh, usual books I write because I have some series and those are a little bit easier to write because I'm very familiar with the characters but if I have some like standalone ideas or completely new series ideas I need a little time to think about it and it's hard in my existing in- environment to do that and, and it, what helps me is having some place that is it's almost like it jerks you out of your own reality and, right. and Thailand is or anywhere in for, for me would be in Southeast Asia or or Asia as a whole is is something that's going to flip flip my brain into a different direction because it's different than where I am. Yeah. Um, the culture is different than the Western culture. I mean, there are definite things that are similar, but it is different enough that you have to really switch the way you're thinking. I mean, if you go to Europe from America, you can usually just slip into wherever you're at, uh, you know, within a yeah. day, and it's and it almost seems like you're at home sometimes. Yeah. Whereas you come to some place that is different, it, it it kind of loosens your head for me anyway. And and I can really I'll sit down at a cafe or a bar or something and watch the people walk by and I, I'll have my notebook and and I just I just start cranking out ideas that I could have never really had time to or the head headspace to get to when I was back home doing my other stuff. So it's it's and, and what helps for me, having been to Thailand several times, is yes, it's different, but I'm also familiar with it enough that 
I can I can slip into to what needs to be done every day. I know what I need to do if I need to get clothes washed. I know where I'm going to get food. Mm. I know how to get around if I need to get around. But there's still tons of interesting things um, and uh, things that just to stimulate my my thinking on on all sorts of levels and 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 that I think every creative needs something like that uh, yeah. something that'll just jar them into another place if they if they get creatively stuck and for me it, it tends to be coming here or at least traveling in general but Thailand more often than not yeah yeah that's very interesting man obviously like with your background like being an author it's something that I know mm-hmm. hardly anything about uh, but why do you think that is why do you think it like um, traveling like clears your head I mean because you, I know myself like, if you just take like time out like right. ideas just like come to you yep. right? right without any effort exactly um, and I think a lot of people like sometimes you try and like again like something like you hear about like that writers go through and suffer and I, I even know myself if I'm writing some like copy or something right. you have like writer's block right so essentially this is your way of overcoming in, in a way I mean it's it's not necessarily writer's park block per se but it's, it's, the idea is the same and I think um, travel in general or something that's going to s- uh, shake up your norm in general is going to do that. And I think what it is, is you have your, 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 we all fall into our daily routines and, and doing everything that needs to be done for our work, our families or whatever it is. And it's, you know, day in, day out, day in, day out, the same thing. But when you go someplace different, even if, if, if you're going for uh, a few days to, a town a hundred miles away or a hundred kilometers away or whatever. Um, it shakes up your, your daily routine. It shakes up because you are no longer in that same groove that you were before. You now have skipped the record into a new groove and, Mm -hmm. and it allows you to do things differently for however amount of time that is than you would have done in just your daily routine. I think that's what it does. So it, it right. gives you just a, I mean, it's, it's a literal shake up to your, your daily life. Yeah. I think I need to start doing a lot more of that. Like yeah. being here in Chiang Mai, there's a lot of towns. Like right. sometimes I go to Pai, but I've been there like so many times I find it boring going there now. Right. right. Um, but there's a lot of places around Thailand that I don't visit enough that mm-hmm. I could, um, what I, what I'd like to do actually is do a, um, I will do in the, in the future, do like a full tour of the whole country. That's a great idea. Yeah. I think that's great. Well, and, and again, that. That's going to shake you up, but you know when, especially do those when you're starting to feel a little stuffed in whatever it is you've been doing. Yeah, and um, you know, like eh, take take five days and you know go down to wherever Krabi or something like that. And, yeah, you know, or or some out of the not. I mean, that's that's a very touristy place, but someplace interesting that you're that you'd be interested in i think that's a great idea i would encourage anyone to do things similar to that around wherever they live yeah i'm gonna go like um probably three or four weeks and i'm gonna take the cameras and pretty much vlog the whole thing that'll be awesome so i look forward to seeing that i'm gonna do like a how to travel thailand series nice. and then so i'll go go one place and then i'll probably spend a day there filming whatever's like good in that city right or that town because i'm gonna right. go to all the northern towns right so i'll probably do a tour all around the north of thailand to start with I think that'd be great because most people don't actually I mean the people uh, the t- tourists who come here don't really hit a lot of northern Thailand I no. mean it's most as you'll hit Chiang Mai for sure maybe Chiang Rai yeah. and that's about it with a few day trips perhaps thrown in there yeah. but that's it yeah but there's a lot here there's like Lampang mm-hmm. um, there's like um, Mae Sai there's loads mm-hmm. there's loads of different places there's like a, the Mae Hong Song mm-hmm. I don't know if you know that the I Mae don't Hong, know that Mae Hong Song if you go to Pai um, you go through Pai and then you can go down. It's called like the Mae Hong Song Loop, where people they go and do like a three or four day motorbike ride. Oh, it's awesome. beautiful, man. It's oh like my a, gosh! Amazing hills and, right, and right. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's really nice. But I do love that up here in in Chiang Mai is the mountains, yeah. uh, as opposed to other parts of, of uh, Thailand, which tend to be fair, a lot flatter or a little rolling hills, but not yeah. not quite like here. It's it's yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's nice. It's, how, how do you find Chiang Mai compared to other places? Because you've been there all over, right? Yeah, I've been to quite a few. I, I, I think I may have mentioned this to you when we were talking before, was that uh, I, I, I really, I, I'm very drawn to it, and especially now after having spent almost a week here this time. And I, I just feel it's very comfortable. It's, it has a lot of the conveniences that you find in like Bangkok. Yeah. Without the 
total insanity of Bangkok. <laughs> uh, I mean, it has its own certain amount of insanity here, but it is completely manageable. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, it, it gets quiet here at night, which is nice. You know, yeah. that doesn't necessarily happen in other places. Um, it's, the mountains are beautiful. It's, it's got some gr- great food. Um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's got that, like we talked about already before, the interesting mix of people here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I really, I, I understand the appeal of it as a potential retirement destination for sure. But um, I, I really like it here. I, I definitely will not be my last time in right. Chiang Mai because it's, just, it, it's very comfortable. It's easy to get comfortable here. Yeah, sometimes a little bit too comfortable. Yeah, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. That, that could be a problem. <laughs> then you got to start going other places like yeah. you were going to do. Yeah. It becomes stagnant. But right, right. How do you find the people here compared to like down south? Uh, I, they're very friendly here. I mean, I've, I've been lucky in my travels. I've run into nice people, really nice people. Most places I am, even in Bangkok, you know, I mean, you, it's a big city. So you, people are naturally, like any big city, you're going to be a little more closed off or a little into whatever they're doing. But it's only natural. And I still meet, have met a lot of great people there. I have had no bad experiences here with anyone I've met. Yeah. Um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it, that's one of the great things about Thailand is just a lot people are very helpful, very friendly, uh, whether they speak the language, your, your language or not. Mm. Um, uh, I haven't had any, any issues as far as I, I can re- recall. I, I really, yeah. really enjoy it. Yeah, they said like uh, Thai people, um, they're originally like, uh, Lana people. That's what the, the place used to be called Lana, uh-huh. and they're actually like back in the day. It was like they weren't really the same from the same people as like Bangkok. Uh, oh right, Bec- yes, because of the the invasion, the different uh, yeah uh, rulers of the of the area, different people, different tribal. Yeah, there's uh, there's tons of like history of this uh-huh. country, man. I've only been looking into it briefly, but um, going back like a thousand years, they were like conquered by the Chinese, and right. conquered by the Burmese, and, right. and then like Ayutthaya was like a different different empire King, kingdom. Yeah, a kingdom down here and a kingdom up here and they used to fight each other yeah all the time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's why they have the big um Chiang Mai has the moat with the big wall right apparently they built that because they were anticipating a Chinese invasion Wait, no no the no there was that was well I guess what do you call them Chinese the Mongols oh the Mongols oh that, that's right. why the I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure, certain I read this in a book right. that the moat was built because the Mongols were going around right. invading everywhere. Right. And the Ch- uh, in Chiang Mai, they thought they were like going to get it next. Right. But then the empire kind of disappeared before they got here, so they never actually. So it never got used. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they never. Well, got, the moat's still there. They never. They ne- <laughs> yeah, they never got invaded. <laughs> Gets used now for songkran. <laughs> yes. It's just- and and a lot of bridges to get across it. So, <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you been here for Songkran? I I've, I have been in Bangkok for Songkran before, right. and uh, actually, I I that was years and years ago, and I may I don't know if it was a mistake or not. It was it was certainly an experience. I for a couple of days I stayed in a hotel right on Khao San Road. Oh shit! And you know Khao San Road is where for those who don't know is where all the backpackers hang out in, in, in Bangkok. And it's really not indicative of Thai culture at all. It's, it's like you're in a different weird, like interdimensional space. That's no country. <laughs> and, but on Songkran, um, it just, I mean, it's already fairly wall to wall people on, on Khao San road, but on Songkran, it was just, the street was just, it was like, I, what I would say back in the States, it was like Disneyland on the worst day of the year when it's just packed where you're shoulder to shoulder to shoulder. But everybody soaking wet with their with their guns and the paste and the, and then the the uh, you know people up on scaffolding with hoses shooting down. I mean, uh, yeah, it was it was fairly. Intense. Did did you know it was Song Crown when you booked? I did. I did. Oh, okay. But I, I I I purposely wanted to see what it was like. I didn't realize exactly how intense it was going to be right. at the time. But right. I loved it. And then I love just driving around the city and you're just driving around and there'll be, like, you know, like four or five kids sitting at the, or standing along the sidewalk with a big trash can full of water and these scoops and they're throwing it at the cars Yeah, wow. and the motorbikes, which, you know, it's actually probably not very safe, but it, 
I mean, crazy. I was going to say hilarious, probably not, but you know, yeah. crazy. They have like a huge, um, huge amount of people die every oh, year. Or I, some crime. I do not doubt that. I do not doubt that. They put out like a statistic every year, and like every year they're trying to bring it down. Which right. I don't know if it goes down or up, but it's in the hundreds, man. It's over crazy. that over that weekend, like right. hundreds of people die. So it's right. real, it's real dangerous, man. But a, a lot of it, I think, is people go out, they party, they get drunk, and then a lot of drunk driving around yeah, some crime. Right. Right, right, right. But um, in, in, in Chiang Mai, when they do the Songkran, it's um, all around the moat. Really? So the entire moat is just packed. Oh, my God. You can't God. go anywhere. Like, Did they close the streets on both sides or just... Um, no, they, they, you can go on the streets, but oh, okay. you just... It's, uh, just, it's, it's car just to car. car. Okay. So if, right. if, you, if you got onto the moat with like a pickup truck, it'd probably take you three hours. <laughs> Three or four hours to go round. To so go all the way around. One time. Oh, my God. And then they, they put the pickups and they put the big buckets of yeah, water right, right. in the back of the pickup. And they're throwing it at the people. Out of the, out of the pickup. And then everybody's on the sidewalk with their, their guns and whatnot. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's pretty uh, crazy. Water guns, yeah. But they, they, um, they get water out of the actual, out of the moat, <laughs> which is disgusting, right? <laughs> P- people have got sick from that as well. You've got to be really careful. If you're in Chiang Mai for Songkran... Um, just, maybe avoid that area <laughs> yeah well, it's, it's the best area but just don't walk around with your mouth open don't, right, so, right. <laughs> don't drink any of the water don't drink any of the water but yeah. if you do quickly quickly lots of antibiotics <laughs> yeah yeah maybe just take some antibiotics just to be safe just, just to be safe right and, and yeah. anything else you can take yeah because that, right? that moat's pretty disgusting oh it, right? yeah yeah it's, it's pretty it's, but disgusting it's just like a giant pond right around the and city it's just sitting there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh my god so yeah. um so what have you been up to this time when you've been here? You've been well, here for I, I've been um, uh, doing research for this idea, mm-hmm. uh, which is a large part of coming to Chiang Mai and, and, and talking to you and um, uh, was part of that. And then I've, I've just been like exploring the city on foot mainly because uh, I love to just walk around and get a feel for a place mm-hmm. and um, um, just kind of taking lots of pictures um, of you know, sitting, I've been, I found a few restaurants that I enjoyed and I just sit there for a couple of hours and I'm writing ideas in my, in my notebook, right. doing a little reading, which is something I always like to do when I'm traveling. Um, I, yesterday I took a full day Thai cooking class, right. you know, which is a very touristy thing to do, but that was fun. You know, I got, I made some pretty good stuff. So I was pretty happy. What did you learn to cook? Uh, Pagra Pao, which Pao. Is one of my favorites anyway. Yeah. And Penang. Panang Mu, which, yeah. which is great. Um, what else? It was, uh, was a soup. I think it was chicken coconut soup. Okay. okay. Did some spring rolls and um, sticky rice with mango. Learned how to make sticky rice. Yeah. What the hell, how the hell did you make that? It is, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm going to be very generalized, but you're steaming the rice right. for, um, I think it's for 30 minutes and it's you put it in this bag and you put it in the steamer, let it steam for 15. Then you pull it out and you flip the bag over so that the bo- the stuff that was on the top is on the bottom and it's getting steamed. And then, um, what else? Oh God, there's so many steps. There's like, um, there's, it, you're adding sugar at some point and some I was gonna say, stuff, this- other stuff and the coconut milk and, um, all that goes into the rice. Yeah, I think so. I, I have to get my, you see, I have a horrible memory of these kinds. <laughs> Thankfully, they gave us a little um, uh, cookbook afterwards so I can go back and look. But it was, um, yeah, there, there, there were some of the different things like that. Right. We, we, made, we actually also made some blue sticky rice, which is you use, there was these flowers that we put in real warm water and it became like a blue dye. And then you add it in, then you mix wow. that into them. Um, and and then and then we made the 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 coconut um, you know the 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 cream that you pour over the top of the sticky rice we did some of that right right so, okay. okay so when you get back to LA you're going to be cooking oh yeah Thai every food. day well, is, it, <laughs> is there a lot of Thai food in LA or? I've never oh been. my gosh yeah. we have a very large Thai community and uh, at one time I don't know if it's true anymore but at one time it was if not the largest one of the largest outside of Thailand in LA we actually have a Thai right. temple in LA it's only one, but it's pretty big. Right. And we have an area in Hollywood called Thai Town. It's where uh, it's, there's a lot of Thai restaurants there and everything, but there's Thai restaurants, well, throughout California, but definitely in Los Angeles, you'll find them. You can't go a couple miles without running into a Thai restaurant. Really? Is it expensive Thai food over there? Well, it, it, it's, it's expensive compared to here for sure. Absolutely. Um, but it's not, 
expensive when you compare it to going to out to just a regular Western food restaurant, you know, right. of the same level. They're they're at the same price or maybe even a little cheaper. Right. See, in England, if you go to a Thai restaurant, it's like really expensive. Yeah. It's like more expensive than like Western food. Right. And then you go there and you pay like, I don't know, like a lot for like a pad thai and you're like, man, this is just fucking noodles. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, well, it, it's the same. I mean, you're going to pay for pad thai, you're probably paying close to 10 bucks at a regular place, maybe even a little bit more someplace else. And that's, you know, that's 300 baht or more. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. When, you, when you think you get it here for like 30, 40 baht. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like 10 times as much. That's insane. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. So, yeah, I wanted to, um, coming off the topic of food. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite topics. <laughs> I was going to ask you about, um, so you're, you're, you're like a pretty successful author, right? I, I, I am, yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely successful in the sense that I've been able to be full time author now 10 years this month. Right. Um, yeah, uh, and so I, I, I would, by, I guess by any measure of success, that's successful. I'm not by any means a household name or anything. I'm not a New York Times bestseller. Uh, I've had a couple big books hit the, uh, USA Today Times or USA Today bestseller list, but not, nothing super high. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, it's just, but it, I make a living at it, and and that makes me have very happy. Very, very humble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I would love to be, you know, get a lot more readers eventually. I mean, sure. because, I mean, I like, I, I mean, not only would it be nice to be more successful that way, but it would. I just love the idea of people reading my stories. You know, it, right. that's that's why you write them, right? Yeah. So, and how many books do you have out at the moment? I have out. Uh, I think I have. I, it, 33 out right now. My, I have a book coming out in a couple of, or at the beginning of October that's either 34 or 35. I can't remember uh, somewhere in that area. Wow. Yeah. And do you, do you remember writing each one of these books over all that period? Of time? Um, I can remember writing some of them. Uh, yeah. uh, if I sat down, excuse me, if I sat down and, um, um, looked at the book and, 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 and just go back and look at my notes, I'll, totally remember yeah. writing it. It's just, I, you know, I, I tend to write, I used to write up to four books a year. Now I write about three, two and a half to three books a year. Uh, so that, that's still a fairly rapid pace. And, um, uh, so it, 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 sometimes you're just, you're moving on, you're moving on. You don't have enough time to remember, you know, uh, right. at the time, but if I go back and look at them, I'll remember them all. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's amazing how you, as the, as the person writing the book can go through it so fast. And when like, I'm a really slow reader, so mm -hmm. it probably take me three months to read one of your books. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but like when, when I'm reading through it, like, and this is what I was asking you about the other day, we had a mm -hmm. chat and, um, like, it seems like so much thought has gone into every single one of the characters. Mm -hmm. You would, you would think like, me reading it, I would think it took the person who wrote this like five years, yeah. 10 years well, to write it. I mean, some people take, I mean, the thing about writing and, and just like anything, and especially in the creative world, I think it probably goes to playwriting and screenwriting and um, painting and all anything is everyone has a different pace. Yeah. And um, uh, I think for me, uh, I, I tend to write at a faster pace. Um, uh but I also try to put a lot of thought into those things. What helps for me now is that a lot of the books I write are part of different series. I have several different series. Mm -hmm. So the re the, the characters are well known to me. You know, my most, my most popular series is the first uh, series I ever, uh, uh, first book I ever got published. Um, it's my Jonathan Quinn's uh, thriller series. And, they, I've been, you know, the first book came out in 2007 on that one. And, um, I've written 14 novels in that and a couple of short stories. So I, I've spent a lot of time with those characters. Right. And, um, that makes it easier. So when I come to those books, I know how they're going to react in any particular situation. Um, and without, I mean, I, I don't have to guess what they're going to say or anything. It's like they're, they're just talking. I'm just writing it down, you know, sometimes. Wow. So you, do you just create these characters like in your head and then you yeah. have them in your head? 
Fairly much. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, I mean, fascinating. I'll write down some thoughts and everything like that. Yeah. So I have I, a lot of weirdos running around my head or maybe I'm the weirdo. I don't know. Wow. So how many, so, okay. I have all 30, 34 uh, books or something. Something like that. So how many characters? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, my Quinn series has five or six main characters. I mean, it has, it has three main characters and then probably about another four or five ancillary characters that show up a lot. Um, um, so that's just that series. I have my XCOM series, which is another spy type series that has five main characters. It's a team. So it's got five main characters and then they have a contact who's always in it too. And then there's another, uh, so there's another like seven or eight characters in that that are, in it. I wrote a, uh, pre slash post a lot, post-apocalyptic series that's a seven book it's all done it's a contained series and that one was pretty wide you know it, i had people in the states i had people in india i had people in europe and south america and, and and so i had that was like a cast of thousands on that right now i couldn't even tell you because it's i have I lost i finished that several years ago this last book in that one so i, I it, i'm not as it's not as close in my memory bank as uh, as the others, but that had a lot in right. it. Like, how do you how do you track all the characters in the book? Do you like map this out? Because I you could really just... wish I did. So there, let me tell you, there are times I'm sitting there kicking myself that I didn't like write a Bible to go with the book as I as I'm going along. I'm actually starting to do that more with the books I'm writing now. What I usually would ha- what I would have to do is I would get to a something and I go wait what did he do on this or where did he get hurt on this in that book back then? And then I have to go back to the other book and, and spend several minutes looking for that, uh, that reference to make sure I get it right. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it would be better if I, if I kept a, a, a more detailed, uh, uh, account of all that, but, yeah, because like, can you not just like go through writing the book and accidentally just forget to write somebody into the book? Well, you could, I, I, and and you definitely could. Um, I I think there are people. Oh God, there was there's some famous author. I think it's F. Scott Fitzgerald who wrote The Great Gatsby, which is you know a very famous book. Wow. Um, I I don't I don't remember if it was Gatsby or there was an, another one of his books. Or oh wait, was it Fitzgerald or? Um, Oh God, I can't, why can't I think of his name? Um, I'll think of it in, in a minute when I stop thinking. Uh, famous, I think it was a detective, actually, a detective series. Um, 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 the, I think, uh, well, whatever. He, he finished a book, got it published, and there was like somebody that he totally forgot. I mean, he, he st- was in for part of it and then it just forgot. Dis- it. Yeah, didn't finish or 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 maybe i can't remember i I believe it got published that way so so it does happen well the hope is though you know i have an editor who i work with who um uh will hopefully if i have done something stupid like that which i so far have not done knock on wood um hopefully she will catch that and say hey what happened to this person you know and um Right, and then um, you, you can get yeah, back and yeah, edit. that's a, you. You have to yeah, and then you fix it before you. You're just like, oh my god, I totally forgot. Yeah, yeah I, I do live in fear of that sometimes. Um, uh, I, I will say that when I'm writing my rough draft, there will be times that I've forgotten somebody for a little bit, and then I go, oh my god, or or I, I have him do something. I go, oh, wait, no, he can't do that. He just he did the same thing back here, and I have to go, oh crap, and fix this and everything. Right, and then obviously. I mean, I wouldn't even know how to like take a, a like a block of text and rewrite something into it. But obviously, right. as an author and a writer, you you right. understand like how yeah. to restructure stories right. and, and stuff like that. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, and you get better and better at it the more you do it. I mean, it's like any job. Uh, you know, I think I'm a much better writer now than I was when I started out. I think my books when I started out are very good, also. Uh, but they've each been learning, you know, stepping stones in my learning. And it's like any job. It's just like, like you with, um, for instance, with your uh, videos and everything. From where you started off to where you are now, I'm t- you've learned along the way and, and improved along the way. It's like anybody with any job. You know, if you go in thinking that you're good right from the beginning and you're not going to improve, then what's, what's the use of doing it? You know, yeah. so you're going to learn. You're always going to learn. And you have to 
be open to that and you use that to get better as you're, as you're going on. And so the fact that I, I do those things is no different, uh, than in the, in, in a general sense is no different than you taking what you've learned in one thing and applying that lesson to the next time you do it or the next time after that. So you intuitively know, you know, what you need to do, like, you know, how you got to set up your angles for a certain thing or, or, how, what kind of open you need or how to, whatever, you know, what kind of exciting shot you want to get. Whereas for me, I know story structure and, and how to, if something's broken, how to fix it. I might have to, I might at a, for a moment go, Oh my God, this is a horrible problem that I've created and I need to fix. I have no idea how to fix it. And I'll leave it alone for an hour or a day. And when I come back to the next day, almost invariably a, new easy answer comes to me right. and I can fix it a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. But you know, just let it mull over it like anybody will do. They'll mull over whatever problem they have. So it's, it's just, we, you know, it would be a boring world if um, we all did the same thing and knew the same things. Yeah. So it's uh, you know, this just happens to me. The, the one thing that I'm really good at. I'm not saying that I'm a really good writer. That's for others to judge. But I, of, of my skill sets, I am, this is my, the, the thing that I'm really good at. Um, if that, if you can yeah. f- figure out where I'm going with that. Um, um, and, and I think we all have that and finding that thing that we are good at, that we enjoy and are, are, and, and are passionate about. I think that's the most important thing anybody can do with, with their lives going forward. Yeah. And how, how, how did you, um, actually, I was, gonna, I was just going to say, how did you get into writing? But, mm-hmm. um, when, when you, when you're talking there, I watched a, um, there's another video of you on YouTube when you're talking about this, right? On mm-hmm. that same topic about being passionate. And, right. um, it's a really good video. And I'll, I'll put a link, oh, uh, to wherever, if, yeah. if I publish this on the YouTube, there'll be links to, to that video. Cause I found that video quite inspiring. Oh, great. Thank you. When you, when you were talking to, um, we, well, I think you were talking to like a group of authors. And, May, uh, oh, was it when I was in front of the, it was like a big group? Yeah. It yeah. A speech. I, yeah. It was a speech. That was, uh, I don't do many of those, but that was a, a writer's, uh, retreat weekend or something. I mean, a, a writer's group or conference thing for people who wanted to write. That was several years ago, but I mean, the message hasn't changed really. Yeah. yeah it sounds similar. It's kind of like, um, you were saying that you were struggling to get published mm-hmm. and, you were just writing every day, right? Mm-hmm. For like two hours mm-hmm. every day in the morning. Were you working at the time mm-hmm. as well? You I said. was working full time. Um, in fact, I was working full time and through the f- publication of my first two novels because I st- still hadn't made enough money from those to go full time um, writing. But um, it's it's like whatever dream you have, whatever you if if you really want it, you keep working at it. Yeah. And even in the face of people saying. You know, maybe you should give up. You're not going to make it. Um, nobody, you know, nobody's going it, to. It, it's very seldom anybody gets a book published or whatever, or whatever it is you're doing. Or say, you know, you you want you you really enjoy. Um, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's something that you really enjoy, and and it's something that is is rare for people to make a uh, breakthrough in. Well, if you give up, you definitely are not going to make it. Yeah. Right. But if you try, you have at least that opportunity. And if your passion is there and you keep at it, um, you are going to have a better chance of making it if you don't do it, because you're the, you, I can guarantee you, you'll have a hundred, 100% chance of not making it if you give up. And if it is what you want, I mean, let's take a step back. A lot of people say that they want to write a book. You hear this. Oh, I, I want to write a book, you know, all this yeah. time. What they want, they want to write one book, maybe. Or they just think, oh, I can do that. It's easy. Oh, I have one story in me and stuff. But they're not passionate about it or right. anything like that. And uh, the, the, the passionate people, in, for instance, who are writers, who want to be writers, we're not saying, I want to write a book. I want to write books. I want to just, you know, th- th- this is, it. I can't not write Right. You know, and, um, and the only way I'm going to make it is if I write every day or if I, if I keep pursuing this. Now, I will say there were different points in my life as I was, um, you know, because I'd wanted to be a writer since I was very young, actually. 
Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, life takes its little curves and, and, you know, through my twenties, I did some writing, but I never really finished anything. And then other things got in the way. There were a year, a few years here and there. I wasn't writing hardly at all, but I finally said, okay, if I, if I don't, if I really want to do this thing, um, I need to, I need to just like, you know, pursue it with all my might. And so I started writing before work. I'd get up early because I knew I had to take whatever time available to me. And the time available to me was either before work or after work. All right. And so I did two things. I, li- I moved to a place that was very close to my office. And in Los Angeles, it's very unusual. I could walk to work, which is really unusual in LA. So I cut down my commute time and I would write, get up early and write for an hour or two, go to the work. And in the evenings I'd write for another couple hours, right. you know? Um, and I do this almost every day. You know, that would just be my routine because I, I, I wasn't going to make it otherwise. Right. You know, I wrote four novels before I sold one. And, um, two of those novels have never been published and never will be because they're terrible, but, but they're like anything you got to practice. You got to, you got to finish to know that you can. Right. Um, and you, and you know, there's going to be mistakes in that. That first, it, one of the things that, um, in, a, in back in the States when people ask me and it, so I'm not quite sure if this analogy will completely translate, but it's a baseball analogy. And that is, okay. The, the biggest ba- team in baseball basically is the New York Yankees. It's what everybody there knows. Um, if you decide you want to play baseball, that first day you go out to play baseball, you're, they're not going to put you in, into the starting lineup for the New York Yankees playing center field, which is the premier position or whatever. Um, on that very first day you play because you've never played before. You don't know anything. You have to spend years learning the game yeah. and getting better and better and better. And you, and you have to dedicate yourself to figuring this stuff out. And so, you know, it's just like for me, for writing, writing those books were me practicing right. as I'm going forward. I, yes, I did try to sell them. Thank God they didn't, but I'm, I did try to sell right. them, but, uh, but they helped improve me so that the third book I wrote was the, was the cleaner, which is the first book in the Jonathan Quinn series. So that's the book it sold, but I wrote a whole nother book after that before it sold because it, it right. took about a year for somebody to buy that. So, All right. So how long did it take for you to get the first book published? Well, it, 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 it was a little bit of a winding, uh, process for me. Um, I, I, it probably, that book probably took me because I was working full time. That book probably took me about a year to write that back then. And, um, and then it took another year of trying to sell it. Um, sold it in January of 2005, but I sold it to a small publisher and, uh, some great guys, but, uh, the, you know, small publishers, uh, are, are always living right on the margins and everything. And they ended up going out of business before they could bring my book out. Um, and this was like August of that same year, 2005, but they had a contact at random house, which is like one of the biggest publishers in the world. And they said, they might be interested. Do you want us to send you their manuscripts? I said, yes, please. Right. And so they did. And long story short, Random House ended up buying my contract from them and then giving me a three book deal. And so I went from, you know, yay, I'm getting published and at, at a small press, but this is awesome. These guys are great to, oh my God, I'm not getting published at all right. to, oh my God, I'm at Random House, you know, and now I, I finally, I, I've really made it. And, and, uh, you know, it's this, it was the same, um, uh, imprint that, uh, publishes Lee, uh, Lee Childs, the Jack Reacher, uh, series, which is a really famous, popular series. I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got to, you know, I got to meet Lee going back there. He's a great guy. Um, got to meet a lot of other writers through this. Um, uh, it was, you know, it, it was just, uh, it was a whirlwind, weird, wild experience, but right. you know, it only happened because I, kept at it. I didn't stop. And if I hadn't sold that book, I would have kept going. I would, I would have written 20 novels, right. you know, and which would have actually been kind of good because I, you know, this is kind of changing subject a little bit, but the, the publishing world has changed a lot in the, um, uh, last 10 years with the rise of eBooks yeah. and everything. Um, it is now possible for authors to be successful 
without having an actual publisher uh, to 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 independently publish. So I have books that are both with traditional publishers, with Random House, with Forty Seven North, which is a traditional publisher owned by Amazon, um, and uh, I also have a lot of my books that are just independently published too. Right. Yeah. Okay. And um, do you, do you credit uh, you being in in, in LA to? Mm-hmm getting those connections with the publishing or did that help? Uh, I mean, in, in, a, in an odd way, but I don't think it was just because it was LA. I, I was the, the connections came through friends I had made at a writer's group that I was in that in LA, I mean, it just, I could have been in a writer's group somewhere else and, and perhaps made those connections. Um, uh, so I, I don't think it, it, it didn't hurt at all. Uh, but it wasn't any kind of like, Hollywoodish type connection kind of thing that made that happen or anything. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I, I have no idea like how that, how the industry works, the publishing industry. <laughs> but like when you're talking about it, it sounds like you said like a free book deal. It sounds like somebody gets a record deal or something. Right. Like, how does that work? It is. It's, um, they'll give you, usually it's a two or three book deal when you start out, maybe just a one book deal. And what it is, is they'll give you an advance. Um, say for argument's sake, uh, well, I mean, it, the advances are, usually a lot smaller than people think, you know, most first time authors might get five to $10,000, which is okay. nothing. Right. Um, maybe it's a little bit more now. I kind of, I don't know. Uh, but you know, you'll, the deals you hear about are the ones where they're getting a million dollars or two millions on those special, special um, projects, but you get this advance, which uh, uh, what they don't tell you is you don't get all that advance right away. You get a third of it or half of it on signing <laughs> an, another portion of it, um, when you turn in the final manuscript and the f- remainder of it when the book finally comes out. So that could be over three years, perhaps, you know, or two years or a year and a half from when I sold to, uh, um, um, Random House, for example, it was another year and a half, almost, uh, almost a year and three quarters before the book came out. So, right. um, you know, and you say, um, you sell them the book, right? So how does that work? Do you take, well, it's, it like they a, a sell percent? them the rights to publish the book. Right. I still technically own the book. Right. Um, I make royalties. Once you earn out your advance, you make royalties on it. Um, uh, you know, so that, I mean, that's kind of how that works. So it's exactly like music, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah, so- they, keep, they keep a large percentage for themselves. Too. Right. I mean, well, they've got overhead and all that stuff. But that's where being independent is nice because you get a, I mean, you still own the book. You, nobody has those rights, but you're getting paid every, uh, a large percentage of, of every sale is coming to you because you're the, retailer basically you know through amazon or something like that but you are the publisher basically yeah your own publisher, publisher right? obviously yeah. self-publishing those, yeah. <laughs> yeah it is yeah and um so how much like um like a jk rowling how much would, would she get like would she, oh. is she with a publisher or oh yeah well yeah. okay i i i mean she definitely was with, or is was with the publisher uh the harry potter books were are with the publisher even uh the ones that she's doing under the pseudonym now that she does, she does some mystery. She has a mystery detect, uh, de- English detective kind of series. Um, but under a pseudonym, uh, it's with, uh, with definitely with publishers, but you know, it's somebody in, in JK Rowling's class or, or Stephen King and all that. They're making a lot in advance on it. Plus they get to keep a lot of the rights that other authors might not get to, to keep or uh, keep completely. Plus, they probably have negotiated a much larger percentage of the uh, of each sale. Mm-hmm. Often, I would think, but um, you know, I don't know how much she makes. But I mean, it, it she's done very well for herself, and for for very good reasons. Those books rock, and and it wasn't easy for her either because I, from what I remember, is when she tried to uh, sell the first uh, uh, the sorcerer's well in the states, sorcerer's stone or philosopher's stone in the UK, uh, first book. It, I think it was very difficult for her to find a publisher. And when she finally did, it was a, uh, not a huge advance and it was a small, um, publisher. And I think they only published 5,000 copies or something like that, or if, if that. And I'm not sure how it, it blew up from there. Um, I, I can't remember. I, I've read it before, but, but, there was no guaranteed success at all for her if you st- if you looked at the beginning of, of that career with the Harry Potter books. Yeah, she's like a sing- single mom from England. Yeah, right? she well, yeah, and she 
writing in coffee shop, you know, just to, uh, just to get things done. But it was a, I mean, it was her passion. It's okay. We can go back to passion. She just kept at it to get it done. And she had this wonderful idea and she's got a, an incredible gift of words of how, how she tells a story that it just, you know, right place, right time, time. And now she's, you know, she's doing pretty fine by herself. Yeah. With the movies and, 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 and uh, yeah, and the and theme parks and theme parks. Oh yeah. There's uh, <laughs> the, um, in, in, in universal studios, theme parks in both Los Angeles and in Florida have, uh, Harry Potter wizarding worlds in them. So it's like wow. the whole Gringotts out, I mean, the, whatever, whatever the, out, Oh, um, Diagon Alley, uh, Gringotts is a bank. And, and, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right, but, um, uh, you know, it's a, you know, stores and <laughs> stores and, uh, everything like that. Uh, and, and a lot of fun stuff. Yeah. So she, yeah. I mean, and more power to her. I, I'm, I think it's great. You know, her success so, yeah. is, 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 is a wonderful thing. So, so as a, as an author, would you say, obviously you're really passionate about it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, if somebody else is, I mean, it sounds like something that if you want to do, you, it has to be like your real hardcore. Well, I, I, you I couldn't I, just recommend it like as a career to somebody else. I was going to say, no, 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 no. that's a good career, but I don't really think it, it is a career sort no. of thing. It's kind of like, it's a thing that you it, just do or it you is. don't do. It, right? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I, if, if somebody uh, says, Oh, I don't know what to do with my life. I'm not going to say, well, maybe you should write books Yeah, <laughs> because you have to, it's got to be something you want to do and you have to have the talent for telling a story um, on, on paper and, um, and creating interesting characters and, and knowing your way around language a little bit anyway, and being open to criticism and, um, feedback and all that stuff. You gotta, you you know, you gotta have a little bit of a thick skin. Um, and, and you've got to want to do it because it's, I mean, writing is a lonely profession because when you're writing, it's just you. Yeah. And, and you're thinking a book is a hundred thousand words, you know, anywhere 80 to 120. I mean, even bigger books. Um, or, or I mean, those later Harry Potter books or some of the Stephen King books. I, you know, I don't know. Those have got to be 150 to 200,000 words somewhere in there. I don't know if it's quite that much, but those are pretty thick books. Um, you have to have the stick to itiveness to keep do it. You know, the one thing that we always say, you know, if you're going to write and it's hard and it's hard for me sometimes is you got to sit your butt in the chair and write, you know, right. it's like button chair. That's the key, you know, because otherwise you're not going to get it done, right. you know, and, and it's so easy not to write. Yeah. And if you don't have the passion or, or the drive to do it, then you're not going to be successful at it. I mean, you might be successful with one book, Maybe you have it in you to write this really great book and you do it. But if your passion isn't there for it, then, then it's unlikely you're going to be able to carry that on. Right. And yeah. do, you ever, do you ever get like writer's block and stuff like that? Uh, I don't, I don't ever get writer's block. I might come to a point where I'm stuck more in the sense, like I'm not really sure where this needs to go or how the scene, the scene isn't developing what I need to do. So I might take a break for a day or two to think about it. Um, maybe I'll work on something else. Maybe not. But then I come back and I can. I'll, I usually find a way around it. Can, can you write like multiple books at the same time? Are you uh, it's. I, I. I am often working on more than one book at a time, but it's not quite the same. I'm. I'm usually writing one book. Um, uh, right now, I'm writing a book. Uh, I have a book with my editor right now that I should be getting back in the next couple of days, the book that's coming out in, in October, just some final stuff on it. And I should be getting that, um, by the weekend, I think. And uh, so I need to go through that. Um, I've been, while I'm here, I've been right. I've been working on the, the idea that I have placed here. I've been writing notes on that. Mm-hmm. And I have this other, um, much grander idea of a book that I've been thinking about for a couple of years. It's more of a, for lack of a better term, it's an urban fantasy kind of thing, which is, you know, it's kind of like set in the real world, but with a fantastical element to it. And, and I've been, I've been really amazed uh, that I've been to think about, I've been able to think about that book a lot here. And I've written a lot of ideas down for that book here. So right. in essence, I'm working on four books right now, but I'm not writing. I mean, just physically writing prose for four books. Although I am hoping. I, I'm going to experiment in somewhere in the next couple of months with 
writing two at the same time. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. <laughs> I, and I may give up on it really quickly, but it, yeah, it's something to think about. Yeah. Cause I just have a lot of ideas that I want to get out. Uh, and if I don't, you know, I, fitting books into my schedule is tough. So if I can't write them simultaneous, I'm never going to get some of these things done. Yeah. I, I watched, I watched a video the other day. Um, and it was, it was Stephen King and they said to him, how do you write books so fast? And he was writing like pretty much at the same pace mm -hmm. as you. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, like, well, he's, so I guess this would be my question for you. You don't handle the editing. You don't do, you obviously just not sitting there helping with the cover design or anything like that. Well, you, you literally just write and then on to the next one and let other people finish it up. Or? Uh, I mean, with the traditionally published books, that tends to be closer to what it's like. Uh, with my independent published books, but uh, I, I'm still much more involved. Uh, but with both of them, even with the editing, yes, I send it them to edit, but then they send it back to me and I go over what they have suggested or changes that they have made. And it's, it's my book, so I can say no. Right. And, and that depend doesn't matter whether it's traditionally published or, or independently published. I make the final call on the edits. So I have to go through all of that. Um, with my independent books, I, commission uh cover designers we talk about designs they i i don't unfortunately i don't have the talent to do a cover um i just i wish i did but i just don't have that uh i'm not good at that kind of thing but i have i work with good people and um and then they send me some ideas and we go back and forth until we get get what's what's needed i i now and for the independent books you know i do everything i write the the copy that goes on the back of the book i I prep the files for uh, Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Kobo and all the other places that things go up. Um, do any marketing, all that stuff. You know? right, yeah, right. So, so whereabouts can people find your books? Like where are you, uh, you can find me. Uh, you can definitely find them on Amazon if you have Amazon. Just look up Brett Battles, and you'll see all of. You should see them all. You can also go to my website, which is brettbattles.com, mm -hmm. and there's a list of all my books there. Yeah, and as we said at the beginning, that's your actual name. That is my actual <laughs> name. I, I, I have to thank my parents for that. <laughs> it's weird that we've got the same name as well. It right? is, it is, isn't it? And use the two T's at the end because yeah. there are some one T breads out there. Yeah. I just think they're unfinished. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, sh I, sh I showed you the other day, um, I buy all my books on like Book Depository. Right. Because I have like free shipping to right. Asia. Apparently my books are on there too. And I sent you the link, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. you got like all your books. How did they get on there? I have no idea. Yeah. So you could be published like in all different places. I've, you just quite don't know. possibly, quite possibly. There, I'm sure there are tons of places. Plus, I'm you know if you if you like to pirate your books off a of BitTorrent or whatever it is you you get out there, I'm sure there are don't some there. That. there. Don't I am not that. suggesting that. You know, Support the guy and buy the books. Yeah, right. I prefer to you know get the few pennies I could out of it. It would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> and what they're, they're available on um as like hardback, soft like uh, uh, most of uh, Kindle. Most of them are definitely Kindle. Um, some of them are also available in EPUB formats, uh, which is the Kobo and the other ones like that, um, uh, that you can get, usually you can find them in probably trade paperback, which is the larger paperback size. Right. Um, some are in paperback, a few of the early, my early books, you might still be able to get a hardcover on those. And almost all my books are also in audible in audio. And you can get them like at audible.com or through Amazon or something like that. Okay. And so, so when you work, so when you go with a publishing house, they take care of all of that, right? Uh, do they provide yeah. you the editor and do they do? Yeah. Yeah. With, with the, with the traditionally published books, they handle everything like that, you know, right. um, with my independent books, I handle everything like that. I even, you know, deal, I, I mean, I, I have a deal with audible.com and they handle the audio production. And, and hiring the people to do that. So I don't have to worry about that, but, um, I have a say. They ask my opinion about who to narrate and things like that. But okay. yeah, I, yeah, it's a good relationship. But yeah, I, I have my hands a little bit in everything. Yeah. So would you say like going with a publishing house or self publishing is better? What's more? Pro I mean, it sounds to me like there's more expense up front. So yeah, there's more expense up front on independent publishing and, uh, you know, there have been a lot of people who have just gone straight to independent publishing and been very successful. But I think the people who've been more, and I don't have facts to back this up, but it, it, it definitely helped me that I had been traditionally published before I went um, independent or in, added independent to what everything else I was doing. Um, so I, I think it's up to the individual, I, you know, couldn't hurt to try to get a, 
publisher first. And if that doesn't work, then you, you know, you can always consider self publishing. You're not going to sell a lot at first because nobody knows who you are, but you, there's ways of boosting that up. And there's plenty of resources online to figure that out. Just don't pay money for, you know, too much money for anything that, because there's a lot of people who want to take advantage of writers out there who are eager to, 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 to boost their careers and everything. But they're, you know, there's legitimate information out there that's free that you can find and stuff. And, you know, if people have questions, they can always email me. I'm happy to, um, um, uh, answer things like that or point them in directions where they can find some information, um, you, that you can email me through the website too. So. Okay. Brettbattles.com. Brettbattles.com. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, um, I don't know if you want to wrap it up there or that's, I, I feel like I've just been blabbing this whole time and no it's really interesting, interesting man it's really interesting oh good i don't know if, you, if you're going to keep talking i don't know how conscious you are yeah. for time or whatever no. it's been great. <laughs> i'm not sure what else i have to say <laughs> <laughs> well you're here you're here um you've been here for a week you're going back tomorrow yeah uh, i'm gonna go down to bangkok for a couple of days tomorrow i'm seeing a friend actually a writer friend who writes chris moore who writes some uh he writes some i've heard uh, that name yeah he writes a lot of there's a couple of different chris moores there's a chris moore who writes some uh horror thriller kind of things and then there's uh christopher moore who lives in bangkok and he writes uh, a series of detective um novels set in bangkok it's um and he and i are we're getting together on monday so i've, I've known him for several years and right. try to get together whenever i'm in town so. okay and then you're flying back what day next tuesday i think next so tuesday. about another week a few days in bangkok yeah a few days in bangkok yeah and wait when you come back again not sure yet as soon as i can I'm sure everyone's going to love this podcast, man. So we'll have you back on for a number two. Oh, right? I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But anyway, it's been great, great having you on, man. Well, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and I hope you like that, guys. Um, so this has been great. I'm blown away. Like just because I, I, the whole plan with this was to sit down with interesting, like I say, digital nomads, right. expats, and entrepreneurs, and like you, you reaching out. You well, actually, you didn't reach out for the podcast. I reached I, out to you. Yeah. But um, the, the amount of interesting people that come through this town is incredible. Yeah, so, you're going to have a, some great opportunities to talk to people. Like yeah, that. I really hope so. And I hope, I hope the guys that are listening, guys and girls that are listening and watching, um, enjoy it. Um, so, yeah. Um, don't forget to subscribe. And um, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, we really need to get some subscribers on the audio as well. Right. So right. if you're listening, or I think you can rate it, right? So on iTunes, rate yeah, I it. Yeah, so. And then you boost us up. Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay, that's it. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And until next time, take care.